good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. Um, yes, uh, my name is Sarah Grafey. I'm going to be presenting today on um, uh, uh, nonlinear optical uh, responses um, in using a model that I studied um, during my PhD and I'm continuing to study. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just uh, get right into it. So first I'd like to acknowledge um, the people I'm currently working with at Los Alamos. Uh, that's Jenshin Zhu and uh, uh, former postdoc Benedict uh, Fosway. Um, I developed this the model I'm gonna talk about, uh, the theoretical model um, at Rice with uh, Qi Miao Si and former postdoc uh, Xin Huan Lei. And uh, it, uh, in, concurrently with experiments um, done by Silke Passion's group um, at Technical University of Vienna, um, with her student, uh, former student Sandy uh, Zaber and uh, uh, postdoc um, Diego Zacco. So um, yeah, so the, the, these experiments that inspired this current this current work um, is this giant topological Hall response that's been seen in uh, the cerium uh, 343 compound. Um, this is a uh, non-center symmetric, uh, non-somorphic uh, uh, system. Uh, which at zero applied magnetic fields uh, with no magnetism, no time reversal symmetry breaking, exhibits a large um, Hall response as the temperature is lowered be below the kind of coherence temperature where um, all the uh, uh, itinerant electrons in the system screen the local um, uh, uh, F moments. Um, and so this is, this is very curious. Um, and as a function of field, um, this also lines up with the um, odd Hall uh, uh, signature, um, which is, of course, seen in uh, time reversal symmetry broken uh, while sending metals, um, and an even uh, response that comes out, which is consistent with this, uh, that's finite at zero field and consistent with this, this result. Um, and so the, the, the thought here for this, um, the origin of this giant, this giant uh, uh, Hall response, why we think it's topological, um, is is that this is a candidate uh, wild con of semi-metal system. So we think that there's there's good evidence that there are wild nodes um, that basically, because they are the wild nodes are fixed to the Fermi energy by a condo resonance um, and form small Fermi surfaces. Uh, that even even very very small um, applied current uh, or electric field uh, driving will kick the system into a fully non-equilibrium regime, um, and so there's an new, there, there's a uh, two omega response um, in response to a, a driving uh, AC um, field here, um, where, where the Berry curvature dipole term could explain the uh, is thought to explain the two omega um, response. Uh, but this one omega response is not well uh, uh, fully understood. Um, certainly, uh, it, its its origin. So we think its origin might be topological in nature, and so this is sort of motivating me to look at the nonlinear um, optical signatures um, of the emission of the emission spectra in this um, in a in a similar related theoretical model. And furthermore, um, there's also you know just a general um, wanting to look at uh, topological semi-metals in the context of um, a, 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 at strong correlation regimes. So if you, we plot um, sort of the Coulomb interaction, uh, ratio of the Coulomb interaction over a, a barrier itinerant uh, conduction electron sort of bandwidth um, in, a, in, a, in a given system, um, we can identify some topological semi-metals in the weak correlation regime, such as tantal and arsenide, and, uh, uh, which is a wild semi-metal and, and cadmium uh, arsenic, which is a, uh, uh, or arsenide, which is a Dirac uh, semi-metal. Um, and in the strongly correlated regime, there have been many um, uh, candidates proposed and uh, realized with, with experimental evidence that point to um, topological semi-metal states uh, there. Um, and, and so um, we can also uh, plot this sort of strong correlation uh, uh, you know, correlation spectrum uh, from strong, uh, strong to weak, um, and also plot different types of elements um, and group grouping them uh, by properties um, versus the spin-orbit interaction. 
So in topological materials, we know that the spin orbit interaction provides a, a one essential ingredient, which is band inversion, that allows energy levels to, to trade places um, and uh, create a, a non-trivial topology. So um, we noticed, of course, that the, the heavy fermions um, occupy a nice place where they're, they're strong, both strongly correlated and uh, have a fair amount of uh, spin orbit interaction in the system. So the challenge, um, it, so this seems like, a, like for the, the heavy fermions are a very good platform to start looking for strong correlations and topology. However, um, we need probes of this band topology that's not going to, um, that's going to be, be useful in the strong correlation regime. So, um, you know, for tantalum arsenide, people have looked at ARPES, um, which shows a very nice result of these linear uh, cones, uh, dis dispersing cones in the bulk. Um, but of course, if we look at the y-axis, this is on the scale of electron volts. Um, the, uh, the relevant energy scale in cerium-343 um, is uh, on the order of uh, KBTK, so the energy associated with the condo temperature uh, at which um, the linear dispersion starts to develop. This is very small. This is an energy resolution that's not really doable by any current ARPES uh, setup. Um, and so one, one alternative signature um, proposed was the uh, uh, specific heat, which shows a nice T-cubed uh, relation at temperature, at, uh, temperature onset around the, the condo temperature. Um, uh, and concurrently with a the theory model um, uh, developed previously, uh, we showed that the condo temperature basically can drive uh, the formation of these, of these nodes. So there are some uh, alternative probes of topology, um, but we would like to look for, for more. So that's the second sort of motivation for this work. Um, and so now um, I'll just go ahead and jump into, um, you, you know, this, this theory model sort of explain its, its properties and, uh, and what it does. Okay. So um, <clears throat> this wild condensate metal model is situated in an Anderson lattice model. Um, this basically models heavy fermion systems as um, it, it's, it's lat models its lattice of local moments as a lattice of uh, atomic-like localized levels um, with an associated Coulomb uh, interaction. These are allowed to hybridize with uh, an itinerant species in the system um, via a hybridization. And so um, the way that we treat this Coulomb interaction uh, is the auxiliary boson method. So this basically takes the Coulomb interaction, sends it to infinity uh, in, in the Kano regime, um, and deals instead and transforms this term into um, a constraint term, which, uh, which basically deals with this infinite energy penalty that we're putting on the occupation of two F electrons per site. Um, constraining it to one F electron per site, and then using um, a, a, an auxiliary boson amplitude to measure the degree of whole correlations away from that one F electron per site. Um, so this, this makes this uh, problem much more uh, tractable. Uh, you get rid of this two-body interaction, basically, um, and make, and uh, eventually becomes, in the, in, at least in the wild colony semi-metal model, uh, it can be uh, solved pretty much exactly. So um, we have to situate this model on some sort of uh, lattice realization. So uh, we picked the diamond lattice, which has um, a very nice property of uh, at first having not these non-somorphic symmetries. So here is shown a screw symmetry um, and, and a screw uh, uh, symmetry axis. Um, what this does in eigenenergy space is it protects certain uh, nodes, uh, sorry, certain bands um, and enforces degeneracies, enforces band crossings. And so then we start adding some, some new ingredients. Um, so if we just have a nearest neighbor hopping on, situated on a diamond lattice, we have these nice um, nodal crossings uh, along the XW points of the FCC Brian zone. 
Um, these are these bands are fourfold degenerate. Um, it's uh, a little hard to see. I apologize, but this is a blue uh, dotted line overlapping with a red uh, red uh, line for the eigen energies. Um, next, uh, we can add some spin orbit coupling, of course, because we know that's uh, very important for topological states. Um, that actually uh, uh, gets you a um, non-smorphic symmetry uh, enforced uh, Dirac semi-metal with a Dirac cone uh, centered at the X points of the FCC Brian zone. And then finally, <clears throat> we break inversion symmetry with um, this uh, on-site term, uh, which basically uh, serves to, and I have another uh, illustration of it, but it differentiates the A and B sub lattices that make up diamond lattice, uh, transforming it into what's commonly called the zinc blend lattice. Um, and with that uh, broken inversion symmetry, we can realize a wild semi-metal. So this is all the itinerant, uh, just the itinerant electron case, um, but we can put this picture together um, and we, in, into the full Anderson lattice model. Um, and we do, we do find this, um, this band structure with a highly renormalized um, uh, a quartet of bands with while nodes along the XW lines of the, of the Brian zone. Um, close to the, uh, the Fermi energy, which is w at which the nodes are pinned, um, we find uh, while nodes arranged in this configuration on, at the, on the Brian zone. Um, Furthermore, these, the energy scale we can, of this uh, quartet of bands, um, you can see it on the y-axis, which is uh, chopped off here, uh, is highly renormalized um, compared to this uh, bare uh, conduction, uh, itinerant electron um, spectrum. Um, and so in the usual heavy fermion case, we use M, M star to denote the degree of um, of a, a, a renormalization or heaviness in the system. And here we use um, the Fermi velocity around this linear dispersion to denote um, this, uh, uh, this degree of renormalization. And so this factor um, is what's responsible for the highly enhanced um, uh, 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 specific heat response in cerium-343. Um, since uh, there's a, a proportion of um, t, uh, t cubed over b star cubed. Uh, so this, this provides a massive enhancement um, if you can get a t cubed uh, response from linearly dispersing bands. Um, so before I explain sort of how these nodes arise at the Fermi energy, um, we can also look at the spectrum in uh, at least along these uh, planes of the Brian zone, um, and, and we can also observe that the linear part, or the, the uh, uh, linear regime uh, in energy, uh, ha also has this nice renormalization, um, as well as the surface states, um, where we can see this uh, bulk surface correspondence. So these four nodes here correspond to these four nodes um, here. Um, the Fermi arcs can actually connect to nodes of opposite chirality at, to, in the next Brian zone, um, which is sort of only shown for one node pair here. Um, and by tuning the ratio of the spin orbit coupling and the degree of inversion symmetry breaking, um, these nodes can be annihilated by, uh, by uh, moving into, into each other and annihilating at W, or as the inversion symmetry breaking is totally reduced back to a Dirac node at, at X. Um, so there, there, so uh, if you do annihilate the nodes at W, what you get is a, condo, a trivial condo insulator in this system, which is important for, for a little later um, when I go to the nonlinear optical uh, signature part um, of this talk. Okay. So um, we can also look at the uh, the Berry curvature to um, to verify the the, the topology. Um, here I've plotted again along this plane, and also showing these uh, um, nodes in the next Brian zone over that are connected by Fermi arcs. Um, and these 
and you can see from the arrow pattern, um, as, as in while semi-metals, um, the nodes uh, in blue are sinks of Berry curvature, and the red represents sources of Berry curvature, um, verifying the monopole nature uh, of, the, of these while nodes. Um, and so, uh, just to flash sort of the, um, the so I, I, don't, I don't have the full eigenenergy uh, you know, ex expressions here, but you can actually separate this, this uh, problem by pseudospin and solve for exactly where the, the while nodes uh, should be. So, so these positions are something that you can determine um, e exactly uh, in the problem. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this condo pinning effect is probably one of the most important properties of this of this model. Um, and so we can see we can see that the condo effect actually drives the formation of the while nodes by taking it out. What we have here is a is a trivial band insulator. Um, uh, this is the case where the hybridization V is zero. Um, and then when you turn it on, you develop the the while nodes. And here I think. Uh, you know, V is on the scale of, of perhaps D, it's a bit, maybe a bit large, but um, nevertheless, uh, it does drive the formation of while nodes. Um, this condo resonance also, due to the uh, constraint of this, um, uh, of this, uh, the condo regime of the F electron filling, actually enforces uh, the, the nodes to appear at, at the Fermi energy. So the consequence of having these highly renormalized bands um, pinned to the Fermi energy is that if I plot the density of states, um, so this, this y-axis is for the whole, uh, the whole uh, spectrum, you can see that the density of states is highly concentrated in the region of the Fermi energy. Um, uh, and if I, if I focus in on this uh, condo temperature energy scale regime, um, and I just separate out what kind of orbitals are contributing to the, these states. You can see that the F electrons are, are responsible for basically all of the, these, um, these states at the Fermi energy. So this really is an effect that's driven by, the, the, the formation of while nodes is really driven by the condo effect in the system. Um, great. Okay. So this is the sort of part two of my talk. Um, right, so high harmonic generation uh, is, is proposed to be um, a probe of both strong correlations and, uh, uh, and uh, topology. So in a nutshell, uh, high harmonic generation is when you uh, drive a system um, at, some, at some frequency uh, omega naught, um, and you drive transitions in the system that um, that emit as harmonics uh, of that of that incident frequency. So um, here, the, this uh, this cartoon from this publication um, is showing an inversion symmetry preserved uh, a high harmonic response with only odd harmonics. But since we break inversion symmetry in our system, we expect that to get uh, all harmonics out. Um, it can, this um, process excites interband oscillations within a band and interband transitions uh, from one band to the next. Um, and so with certain dis dispersions and certain um, configuration, configurations of the bands, uh, one can expect that the high harmonic um, spectrum that you get out can be, can differ might be able to differentiate these um, these eigenenergy features. And so the, the other um, nice thing about this light, uh, uh, you know, driving by light um, or elect electric field is that this can photoinduce um, quantum materials to new phases. So it's a, it's a way to probe quantum materials um, in, in, in a new way and get new information um, out, of, out of that process. Um, so, um, so one one instance of this uh, sort of photo-induced um, phase transition uh, is this work by um, 
uh, was uh, co-written by uh, Benedict, the former postdoc that I worked with, um, in which uh, a, a, condo, um, a condo system initially with a gap, um, so sort of, this is sort of seen in the, the, the spectral function, this, this, these two bands separated by a gap before the pulse, and then after the pulse um, are driven into a metal, a metal state. Um, and they can uh, look at the high harmonic spectrum um, and say something about uh, uh, the, the emergent features of uh, this metallic state by uh, looking at some of, the, some of these features along the band edge. Um, so so it's, it's, a, it's obviously can be used as a probe to, to drive new uh, phases and say something about, about those phases. Um, in the the um, in the realm of topology, uh, it's also been claimed to uh, high harmonic generation has also been claimed to observe uh, topological phase transitions. So in this work, um, they look at a Haldane model, and they tune. Uh, I believe this contour is along this line. Um, so in the in the Haldane model, there's a trivial phase. Um, outside of this sort of figure eight uh, or like infinity symbol um, with a true number of zero. Inside, um, you have a finite true number of plus one, minus one. Um, and along this phase boundary, there is a gap closing that has to occur. Um, and so this uh, spectrum, uh, or the series of spectra, um, are tuned by this, um, oh, I'm so sorry. This is a, I think it's cut along this way this is because this is the phi naught parameter. Um, yeah, so, so at these phase boundaries here and here, um, the transition from trivial to, to critical to topological, you can see that the, um, uh, at least for this, uh, uh, this, pro this polarization, the harmonic spectra lights up uh, really strongly um, in, the, in the vicinity of this gap closing. So um, in this way, you can observe a topological phase transition. All right. So um, I, I know this, this, these tensors and these indices will probably make your eyes glaze over. Uh, this is really just to say that using um, this tool on the, uh, the crystallographic server, um, we can look at this zinc blend lattice, this inversion symmetry broken lattice that we're using for the wall kind of semi metal model and say something about what sort of uh, 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 driving along crystal axes we can use to excite other components of higher harmonics. Um, and we can't go too much further than, than fourth harmonic. Um, but the, the, the point is that we want to look, we're interested in transverse hull uh, harmonics right, excite in the plane and get something out of the plane. Um, and by symmetry, uh, since it's inversion, in, inversion broken, we do have um, even components. Uh, those are allowed by symmetry in this system. Uh, there's not a, a, a one omega um, expected that's all longitudinal in the system. Um, and yeah, this is just a throwaway note, but uh, we're not here to sort of maximize the harmonic yield. We're really just interested in these transverse components. So the, the, what I chose is to excite along, equally along X and Y and detect in, in the current along the Z axis. Um, so I'll go quickly through this. So to get the wall condo semi-metal model ready for looking at these, um, these high harmonics, we do a Pyrrhals uh, transformation. And this, this basically uh, makes it so that um, our kinetic uh, hopping uh, uh, in nearest neighbor with this T should be T hop um, and spin orbit coupling terms, which is a second nearest neighbor Dressel house type term. Only those terms are affected by this, uh, uh, this uh, vector field uh, or vector potential field. Um, and the nearest neighbor term gets this uh, U, uh, um, uh, this U factor. Uh, which has uh, both a, a you know, K minus A type uh, shift uh, in momentum space and also this phase, um, this modulation of the hopping term overall as a function of time. Um, this this spin-orbit coupling part just gets that, uh, that shift. 
Um, and then we uh, do the time evolution of the, weight of the Schrodinger uh, equation. Um, and uh, we use a really general uh, expression for the current um, that should give us all harmonic orders. The only sort of issue with it is that it's hard to, sometimes hard to see what you're getting out unless your signal is very, uh, uh, very obvious. Um, uh, so there's no, there's no special constructions in here. It's just this current based on some polarization. Okay. And then last, um, this is the pulse envelope and the, and the type of pulse I use. It looks like this with this particular frequency. And then what I'm going to do is compare a wild condo semi-metal phase with a trivial condo insulator. Um, and the way I'm measuring my incident frequency is by measuring the, this condo insulator gap, um, which is around one. So for here, um, I'm at uh, half the, the, the gap here um, in excitation frequency. Okay, so first for the condo insulator, um, we can contrast uh, the nonlinear or high field uh, response versus the linear, uh, the more linear response, which is um, at a lower uh, uh, incident intensity. Um, and of course, by, frequent, by, by symmetry, we have a two omega response. So this is, um, uh, so this is the, uh, uh, the a dipole acceleration term to describe the um, high harmonic uh, generated intensity versus um, uh, multiples of the incident frequency. Um, and so this is for uh, delta over two and delta over four. That's why this goes to 10, uh, uh, 10 omega naught. This goes to 20 to describe the same energy window. So uh, yes. By symmetry, the condo insulator does have a two omega and a four omega uh, response in the higher intensity regime. Um, with a smaller frequency, you even get more orders out. Um, and you can see, but you can see that this is quite a small scale. Um, so, so basically, um, these higher harm harmonic responses are, there's some sort of cutoff between uh, these two intensities that lead to this drop off. In the wild condo semi-metal case, we can do the same sort of study, um, but we can we can see and we can see that indeed the four omega and six omega uh, six omega um, responses drop off outside of the the nonlinear regime. Um, and I and I it's it's hard and you have to squint at one omega, but there does seem to be um, there might be something. It's very very difficult to say. Um, one thing that I do want to point out, which I think is on the next slide, yes, um, is that you, if you compare um, the Kano insulator and the, and the wild Kano semi-metal, um, we can see a low energy feature around zero omega, um, but it's much stronger in the wild Kano semi-metal. And so what we think this is, is reflective of the gapless, um, just above the Fermi energy, um, sort of excitations that are happening um, uh, right above that frequency. And you can see that, that it's, it's about an order of magnitude difference. Um, this the first sort of initial bump, and this one is actually quite, quite broad. Um, yeah, and then this is just for the, the lower frequency um, regime. I apologize, these axes are not quite, uh, the y-axes are not quite lined up. Um, but see, this is maybe, 10 to the 14, or yeah, 14.5. This is just under 10 to the minus 15. So there's a qualitative difference um, in that uh, that uh, that low frequency response. Okay, and then um, if we want to compare the transverse, which is this um, detecting in J's in Z uh, uh, response versus the longitudinal, just in the Wallacano semi-metal model. Uh, for the two different frequencies, incident frequencies that I chose. Um, you, you can see that the transverse response uh, is mainly from the low-lying bands. So uh, one, it's easier to see in this, in this plot, but uh, the X and Y directions uh, shown in pink, right, with odd harmonics shown, um, is picking up this higher, this higher harmonic signal, which is reflective 
um, really of the uh, the upper nodes um, of the of the uh, of the upper quartet of bands in the system. And so it's nice that the transverse response um, basically ignores this sort of this sort of thing. There's just a tiny little blip there. Um, also, in the longitudinal response, there's no uh, you don't pick up any um, of this near zero omega um, component. So that's an, also a nice difference between between the two. The transverse response um, shows us something. So um, I'm not sure how I am on time. I think I'm just a little bit over, but I think that's probably good to to summarize and wrap up. Um, yes. So we what we found is that um, this high harmonic response gets enhanced um, from the you know mini body renormalization that leads to enhanced density of states. Um, especially around the Fermi energy um, where we have our, our wild nodes um, and is also enhanced, um, especially at low frequencies due to this, this gapless nature of the wild Kano semi-metal. Um, uh, and the Kano effect, um, th this renormalization and resonance and basically the way that it drives the formation of the, the wild nodes, um, it means that the barrier curvature is very probable at this low very low frequency, zero sort of omega response. So this sort of gives us a hint that maybe the barrier curvature is responsible for some of these features, that these are sort of topological uh, responses. Um, and this is just sort of a, 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 a summary of, of sort of what you just saw. Um, but I, I guess the, yeah, the last thing that I, I would like to say though, uh, especially in, in, in response to this is that Maybe we shouldn't get too excited because, you know, emission is still fundamentally different from Hull measurements. But this seems very promising, at least in my eyes. So um, this is very exciting, and I'd like to investigate a lot more. And uh, yeah, so thank you for listening. Questions, comments? Yeah. So just, just so I understand, what you're plotting here is, is amplitudes or amplitude squared? These are the, oh, it's the, the amplitude squared. Yeah, so this squared. Is, it's, a, it's a Fourier transform of a derivative squared. Okay. That, so it's, a, it's reflective of the, di the dipole acceleration term. It, is there anything happening to the phase? Say again? What about the phase of the response? Um, I don't know if anything useful, I'm not sure if there's something useful I could really say about it, to be honest. We haven't looked at it. I okay. mean, it's, it's not, it's not something that people usually, I don't think, look at, but you know, if you think, if you think that could be interesting, I mean, I'm all ears, like. All right, I, th I think it would be, but, but we can okay. talk about it in the <laughs> No, I'd love to, I'd love to hear more, yeah. Okay, is it there? Okay, fine. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should talk after. So, so a striking feature of this wild condo semi metal is that the, the, the wild point is pinned exactly at the Fermi energy. So, I'm just wondering how robust that is. So, so is that something that is that only occurs in the infinite U limit? Or, so if, if I, you know, go towards the mixed valence, you know, turn down U, does that, does the, would the wild point move away from the Fermi energy? Uh, how, how, uh, how protected is that? I, I think I did, um, I think I did guts filler calculations on the, it was a while ago, but no, it stays pinned. Um, it's also, I mean, we also in, in the um, uh, 2018 PNAS paper looked at the residual interactions, and it's still robust. Okay. Yeah. And so, and I guess maybe this is an old question, but so does this give some signature in like the heat capacity? Look, you know, is that something? Can are there other signatures that you have this well note exactly pinned at the Fermi energy? Uh, well, I mean, so the 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 specific heat that I showed. Sort of in the very beginning, um, oops, uh, this 
Um, so this, so I flew, I blew through it a little quickly, but um, basically you don't expect a T cubed relation for the, spe the specific heat unless you have a linear dispersion. Right. So you can, you can drive that, you know, um, and, and we did and, you know, but the, the striking feature, another striking feature is that that T cubed um, uh, relationship doesn't really develop until low temperatures where you expect the condo effect to start to kick in. So that's how we know that the formation of that linear dispersion is being driven by the condo effect starting to, to arise. Okay, nice, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. I, I guess I'm curious, so in the strong field regime, you, you expect to destroy the condo coherence completely and, and I guess I'm curious, like, so as the, the condo state recovers, is there something, so the, where do I see, like, the, the topological obstruction or something like this to the, is there, is there anything like this that's preventing the, the coherent state from reforming because of somehow the topology? Ooh, um... So yeah, yeah, something I, I I guess I neglected to say about these simulations is that they they assume that the order parameters just so that you know we can compare apples to apples between the the Wakano semimetal and the Kano insulator is to assume that the order parameters, namely the auxiliary boson, is is static. So we don't change that over time, and so for that for that reason we don't expect that there's a photo induced phase transition in, in any of this data. Certainly, it's something I'm working on, and I, I, yes, I would love to see it. I think maybe there's a regime that can get us close, but that's still an underworks. Yeah. Uh, hi. So this is about the texture that you are showing um, for the wild phase. The texture? Yeah. You you had a plot of the texture with the arrows. Oh, the very curvature? Yeah, this one. Yeah. So around the pi pi point, uh, is there a singularity? Uh, Looks like a vortex there. You mean? Uh, yeah, close to the pi pi, yeah. Like here? that one there, yeah. Um, this looks like a saddle point to me, but I don't, you know, the, so there, there's a related work um, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, using a, a Zeeman field, and there we do see, just, you know, non-monopole for formations of the Berry curvature. I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if there was some other strange object in the system, but I haven't looked at that point especially carefully. I think, to me, it just looks like a saddle point, and that's, sort of natural for barrier curvature. It doesn't, I don't think it, to my knowledge, it doesn't mean anything to topological in this context. Um. Any other questions, comments? So you have this interesting construction here where you're starting off essentially with an insulator, right, where your conduction bands are really high and your F states are at the Fermi level. Mm -hmm. um, does all of this survive towards sort of a more conventional picture where your conduction electrons are initially metallic and you develop ion nodes uh, in your heavy conduction, heavy fermion state? Uh, I guess I'm, I'm struggling to understand the Questions. So, so like if, okay, say this, these conduction bands were overlapping with the F band to start, right? Okay. Or your Fermi level was in the conduction bands to start. Okay. Um, so you have a metallic, right? Because this looks like an, an insulator yes. at, high temp at high temperatures. Uh, so does this all survive, basically, if it's a met metal at high temperatures and your Fermi level is initially in the metallic state? Um. So th there is a there is a symmetry reason why I don't 
I don't think so. So, oops, wrong thing. Um, so basically, um, gosh, now I can't remember the the authors. There's basically a, a space group reason why at ha at say half fillings for the space group, I expect that that's an insulating state, a triple insulator state always. Um, it's it, it has to do with um, gapless, uh, uh, the possibility of gapless um, states at certain fillings. And I can't remember the authors now. It's very, it's either Vishwanath or Param Swaran, but I, I think it's Vishwanath. Maybe I can ask that. Yeah. The tunnel research formation can, can happen either when the F levels are below the band edge or in the middle of the band edge, which was your question, right? So here, uh, everything is similar to the condo insert formation, except that symmetry prevents the full gap to be open up. So the answer is yes, and the other models you can do calculations. Another question? It's not a question, it's just an, uh, a connection to the experiment. So, so I mean that I think the luxury of this situation is that actually the background is a condo insulator because that helps to identify experimentally the signatures, right? We, I mean, that, that's what we know from the field tuned experiment that Diego was showing. Once we annihilate uh, the, the, the wild notes, in fact, there is a condo insulator in the back. So I think that's really what the experimental situation is. Of course, that's not the, not the same structure, but I mean, that's the situation. Yes, yes. So I think we still have two minutes for Sarah, if there's a, any burning question. Otherwise, we are just exactly at uh, the schedule time. Thank you again. Thank you.